Uh, well, it's great to be back um, at uh, Media Day, Pac-12 Networks, the studios. Um, obviously, always do such a fantastic job. Thank you, Natalia. And uh, it's good to be back at the start of a new year. Um, this is a my ninth year now back at Oregon State, and uh, the culture is tight, um, as evidenced by uh, just the time we spent on our team retreat this past weekend. Is always something we do each year, and I was just we were just talking about it and reminiscing how much fun we had and um, how special this group is, uh, you know. And it's something we work really hard to do is to put a, a team together that is that can be such a tight knit group. Um, that operates as a family, and this is uh, just another version of Oregon State women's basketball that has that in place. And so this is a, a very special group um, that I'm excited to get to uh, help lead this year, and I can't wait to start this journey with them um, in a conference that is um, as good as any. Uh, it's an honor uh, to get to participate in it night in and night out. Um, there's going to be all kinds of challenges to face this year, and I'm excited for that with this group. And so um, we're glad to be back. And so now we'll open it up to questions. If you could, just a reminder, wait for a microphone to ask your question and identify yourself, please. This way. Hi, Michelle Smith, Pac12.com. Um, for you, Coach, actually, and for the players as well, You've gone through several cycles where you have a major player who graduates and moves on, and then you sort of have that reboot in a sense. Do you feel like at this point, having gone through that cycle quite a few times with these marquee players that sort of really define your program and then move on, that you've you know figured out kind of the best way to get this, you know, to put the program back in a place where you want it to be without worrying about who you lost the year before? Yeah, thank you, Michelle. And by the way, uh, this is Katie McWilliams and Destiny Slocum. Um, I don't know. So anyway, um, well, I think that's a great problem to have. Uh, in the last three years, we've had four of our students drafted in the WNBA. Um, and so that anytime someone does that, that leaves a, a void and it leaves a hole. And um, then it creates an opportunity for the next group to step up into that. And so Marie certainly had as, as great a year as you possibly could imagine a player having last year um, in every way. And I know all of you that follow this so closely um, we're able to watch that the year she had. And so you know how important she was to our, our program. Um, for three years, Marie didn't say a word. <laughs> there was no place to get a word in as a leader. Uh, and so she learned all those lessons and then stepped into that role for our team last year as, as our only senior. Um, and so with her loss, um, you know, it's one of the things we talked about this weekend is, is how great she was and what she brought to us that are, are now gone and need to be replaced. It's just good to verbalize those things. And so our team as a collective group can step up into those roles. And so it's something that I think that we all deal with every program. There's graduation, this is college sports. And so there's, it's cyclical. Um, and so every year there's new opportunities for people and every year your team is gonna be slightly different, but the foundation of who we are and how we operate remains the same. And so when I mention culture, that's what I'm talking about. And so um, I'm confident we'll have people step up, fill the void, we'll be slightly different, but uh, that's the fun part of the journey that we're on each year. Coach, uh, Kevin Dana, pack-12.com. Oh, I'm sorry, Katie, did you want to answer? I was going to say something. Um, I just want to say for me, I've had the opportunity to learn and watch those leaders um, these last three years, and so I know what it takes to be a leader on the court and just to learn from Marie and Sydney and Jamie, all those people that I got to play with was a privilege, and uh, it's made me a better person and a better basketball player. Um, coach, uh, so taking a look at your roster, you might have the biggest team in the country with three players, six, seven, or taller, certainly the biggest in the Pac-12. I uh, just wonder if you could talk about kind of what that size brings to your team, even though you lose Marie, uh, who is obviously great down low for you. And then Katie and Destiny, what's it like playing with that size in practice and looking forward to games with them this year? Yeah. Well, it's interesting, you know, the shortest coach and the tallest team. Um, <laughs> it's always kind of ironic, um, you know, but we always want what we can't have, I guess. And so if I can't be tall, I'm going to align with tall people. And so, um, you know, I, throughout my career, you know, early in my career I, at a, at a Division three school, you don't always get to pick who you get to coach because you don't have scholarships to offer. And, and so um, then you stumble into a team that has a 5'11 center one year and you stumble into a team that has a 6'4 center one year and you just learn how to make it work. And, and I've learned that I really like tall posts. 
Um, that's something that has worked well with me through my career. And, and so with the success of Ruth Hamblin, I think that was, you know, even before her, Patricia Bright before her, and then Thais Pinto before, with, um, with Patricia. Um, and then Ruth Hamblin came in, and everybody knows about Ruth and, and the success that she had as being, you know, six, seven, really. Um, so that just feeds itself a little bit. And so I think when, if you're a tall post player, you're looking for programs that know how to use that, use you, and have had success. And so um, now, you know, with this talent, A, it's going to help us uh, replace Marie. It's going to allow us to continue to do some of the things that we've done. Um, they're amazing people. They're amazing. They're going to be amazing players. They're inexperienced in comparison to Marie at this moment. Um, but we've got a team to bring them along, and we've got a group of uh, perimeter players that play at such a high level um, that it's going to make their jobs easy, you know, um, especially early in the year. And then it's going to be fun to watch them develop and turn into the next um, Ruth, uh, the next Marie. And so we're excited. I'd have to say it's a little scary driving into the paint now because they're <laughs> they're so tall in there. But I know those uh, the three posts have been um, awesome so far, and I can see their desire to grow as players and as people. So um, I'm super excited to play with them this year. I mean, I think it's every point guard's dream to look um, down the line and see six, seven, six, nine, and then a six, seven again, and you're like, wow. This is what I get to throw the ball to every time I drive in. And so, like, I think just having them and the people they are and, and them wanting to grow and learn from Marie is the best aspect of them all. Uh, Lisa Woodward, Pac-12 Net Network. Uh, Destiny, how would you approach last year um, having to just sit and watch for the first time in your life and not get to play games and we know how competitive you are and how, where do you think your game is now compared to a year ago and kind of what your goals are for this season? Uh, initially, it was really hard. I mean, to the first game, not be able to be out there with them and practice with them, but not be able to battle with them was really hard for me, especially as a competitor. But then as the year went on, it was kind of like I had a perspective change to see, be able to see the game from a place I've never seen it before and be able to watch him and get to know him, get to know my players on a whole different level. Everything I learned was outward focused, and I've realized. Well, what was the turning point for you? You mentioned at, at a certain Yeah. Literally during the first game when I was watching, I was like, this is the moment, like, I love these people. I love where I am. I love this culture. I love this staff. Like, what can I do for them to my, make myself feel better, you know? And, like, for them, it was just, like, having them around made me feel better. And then your question after, what was the question after? I'm sorry. Oh, from last year, right? Yeah. Uh, I think how I said, just seeing the game from a different perspective, being very outward focused. And I realized as a one, that's really important too because even though you're kind of thrown into a leader posi leadership position um, just by being the one, I mean, you're bringing the ball down, you're setting up the offense. And so kind of seeing that unfold throughout last year and learning how to get better from him. I mean, Sydney Weiss was there before. I've heard the stories, like I've seen, watched film on her, like seeing how she kind of ran the system and like wanting to be like that. And so for me, I feel like that's where I am right now, is just trying to be the best aspect of me, but how can I be the best for my teammates as well as a one? Hey, Scott. Joan Bonfacini, Act 12 Networks. This is actually for uh, Destiny and for Katie. So, <laughs> so Destiny, I know you watched. I mean, that's a big adjustment to sit. Um, okay, we talked about your three post players. You guys got big team. End of the game, who do you pass to inside? Who's the best one? <laughs> Come on, it's, you have a game tonight. Game's on the line. Who do you pass to? I mean, I want to know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right. I got to give it to a post? I mean, I, yeah, they're all yeah, good, that's so what I'm, I'm going to give it to all of them. You just talked about three post players. I know if, if your teammates open, you're passing to her. I mean, she's a great three-point shooter, but you got to go inside. They're open. She's covered. She's coming with the fire. All right. Um, right now, I'm probably giving it to Joe Grimmick. Okay. Yeah. Why? I, uh, I think her watching Marie last year and kind of battling with Marie, if you've seen her from where she was last year when she first stepped into open gyms to where she is now, her development as a player is amazing. And, like, her mindset is completely different from than it was a year ago. And for me, I think, like, seeing that growth and seeing her want to grow – has me throw trust into her. And so that's who I would trust with that if I'm thrown into a five 
right now at this moment her maturity, Joe. Okay, good. So Katie, I mean, you had some really big games and this is your senior year. Okay, what are, what are your personal goals for this season? I mean. As a basketball player. As an individual. Yeah. Um, I mean, I just want the success for this team, of course, but um, I just want to, personally, I want to be a better leader. I want to be able to um, have a, like a vocal presence on the court. And I know I try to lead by example, most of all, but I want to be able to um, speak up when I need to and have that vocal presence. So, um, but I also just want to, I mean, it would be a goal for me to um, be on that all Pac-12 team and to be on the all defensive team. So those are my two main goals for this year. Yeah, it makes us really versatile, doesn't it? And so this is the first time that I've had um, four point guards on a roster because Katie played point guard when Sydney Weiss was out. She was Sid's backup at the point for two years, um, you know, and started eight games, you know, when Sid was out. And so uh, with Aaliyah Goodman and the year that she had last year at the one, you know, to have four people that have played the point, you can't have too many point guards on the floor. And so I think that makes us extremely versatile, allows us to use destiny um, in a variety of ways, um, and not just one person controlling the ball all the time. And so uh, not ready to commit to anything yet, coach. And so, um, you know, so I just think those are all good problems to have. Scott, Tammy Blackburn, Pac-12 Networks, how are you? Awesome, good to see you. <laughs> good. Uh, the game continues to get more and more physical each year. You guys have the size, the strength. How f physical can you guys be in, in terms of competing in, in that area? And, and what are you thinking in terms of what the other teams have? Well, I think that's a great question. And I thought that was a huge weakness of ours a year ago. Um, going into last year's season, I was, I was worried we'd get a rebound. I knew Marie would, but the other positions, I didn't know. You know, you're looking at Kat. You know, you, you know Mick's going to rebound. Uh, Taya played a large you know, so much for us last year at the four and started from December on, um, you know, and Taya's, you know, a f basically a perimeter player. Um, how quickly is she going to adapt? And, and then um, as the year went, everybody got to watch. Uh, we out-rebounded Baylor. Baylor was out-rebounded by one team all year long, and it was us um, in the tournament. And the physicality that we played with down the stretch of the season last year uh, was the difference for us. That and so just watching the evolution of each of these athletes, Katie throwing her body into people, Taya throwing her body into people, Kat becoming a big-time defensive rebounder um, along with everybody else that we have, I thought that was maybe the biggest adjustment from the beginning of the year to the end for our program. And so my, my expectation is that's remains. And so uh, they know what it takes now. I think that was the greatest thing about our finish last year, a year where we went into the year with high expectations but very limited experience. Um, that all changed. And so now this is a very experienced team, inexperienced at the five on the court, but not from watching. And so that changed. And so I'm anticipating, I, I agree with you, you have to be physical to win. And uh, I anticipate this team embracing that and um, being able to do that. I think we have time for one more question. Hey, Scotty, ladies, um, Ann with the Pac-12 Networks. Um, Scotty, well, kind of dovetailing on what Tammy asked you um, and, and how you answered it, uh, folks from the outside looking in would say once again, or not once again, but last year overachieved. They would put that moniker on you guys. You talk about the inexperience last year, the evolution of the, of the team last year. However, it was the, those upstart beavers, overachieving, et cetera, et cetera. Do you ever consider your club overachieving, or are these the expectations and standards you've set from year one? And then a quick take on what Destiny talked about, how she had to wait on the sidelines, waiting her turn. What was it like for you knowing you were going to get her this year? Uh, well, that was that was nice every day to wake up knowing that. I hear and, you, baby. And uh, <laughs> you know, and and most importantly, just so proud of Destiny for the way she handled last year. She made the most of it. That's a very difficult thing for someone to do. But she, Destiny, from day one, turned that into a positive. Instead of subbing herself out mentally in every in every way, um, she made everybody better every day and was everyone's biggest fan. And it was weird to go on the road and not have her because she was such a huge part of our team. But obviously, couldn't travel with us last year, and so. Um, couldn't be more proud of what she's done even to this point. She hasn't been on the floor yet in a game.
And so, but she's handled it perfectly. <clears throat> as far as Upstart, um, it's interesting to me. I mean, this program's finished in the, in the top 10 in the last three years, um, you know, and um, because you graduate someone doesn't mean that you're not gonna be good the next year. It just means that that person left an incredible example to follow, and so it's time for the next person to step in. So our expectation is to win every night. Uh, I don't care if we're freshmen or seniors, and you know me, I've got a national title with a bunch of freshmen, right? 10 true freshmen on that team. And so I love freshmen. I love, I don't, I'm never scared by inexperience because I don't coach when they're juniors and seniors. I coach them today to be elite. And so my expectation is that everybody performs. And so when you've got the character um, that those of you who know our team, if you know these people and you know who they are, you know they're winners in life, they're going to come through. Um, and so these are people that are on a mission. Uh, this culture is as tight as it's ever been. Um, I know I say that to a fault, but it is. It's true family. Um, that's our standard, and that's how they choose to operate. Um, and when you've got those things in place, you're going to reach your potential every year at some point. And so, you know, last year we had a couple hurdles early, and it fueled. I mean, think about our L.A. weekend. Second weekend, in, we get absolutely drilled in L.A. both games. Well, UCLA, and then we, we lose an 18-point lead and lose and get swept down there. Um, this team turned that into huge success um, down the road, down the stretch. And so this team will do the same thing, you know. Um, can we start out a little further ahead? I think we should, actually. I think we have the experience now to do that. So um, I don't care what outside perceptions really say. I just know that we're just going to keep doing what we do. And, um, you know, the hope is that that turns into lots of fun and lots of wins.